Hey guys, it's Clint, the clinical liaison for bone foam. As many of you know, bone foam was born out of orthopedic trauma where we've been optimizing patient positioning for both the patient and the provider. Those same principles have carried over into the spine space, and today we'll be going over our next end positioning system, which is designed for ACDF procedures. So this is our next end positioning system. The next end positioning system is designed for patient positioning for ACDF procedures or anterior cervical discectomy infusion. Um, that is a, a universal tabletop positioner designed to be used on a, uh, most commonly it's going to be on a Jackson table or potentially a pro-axis table, depending on what uh, table is at the spine facility. Normally, this, it's a tabletop padding, so typically you're, you'll take off the normal padding that is on the table, and this will replace it. There's Velcro on the back that will that'll stabilize it in place. When it comes to positioning this on the table, the head portion you want to be as close to anesthesia as possible. One thing you'll want to do is confirm with anesthesia what type of um, cervical positioning the surgeon prefers. Some will use a type of head halter traction where it might need to be positioned a little lower. So always confirm with anesthesia where the most cephalad portion of the positioner is going to go, most commonly right at the edge of the table. The leg piece um, is the part that is going to be a little bit more variable. If someone's going to be a little taller, uh, it's going to be a little bit lower on the table. If someone's a little bit shorter, it's obviously going to be most uh, adjacent to the piece. It has table straps that you see here, these glossy table straps that will help stabilize it as well. Um, that's just for tightening it down once you have it in the correct position. Once the next end is in the proper position, we then want to attach our single-use components. We can first start with our arm uh, straps. So there's three strap slots on the side of the next end. The most, the, the most caudal one or the one that's furthest down the table, that is going to be a table strap. The top two are going to be where we put our arm straps. These are black straps <coughs> that are going to be uh, holding the patient's arm and chest. One thing we want to do is just get them attached before the patient comes on the piece. Typically we like to attach the arms on the opposite side on which the patient is going to be brought in on their bed. So in this setup, the patient would be brought in on their bed from this side and then transferred um, over. The other thing we want to attach right away is our Y strap. The Y strap will be pulled over the patient's shoulder later on in the setup. When this is over the patient, the blue side is going to be up. But before the patient gets on there, we want it to be hanging off the edge uh, towards anesthesia. Typically, we want to, after it's attached, just attach it high enough where it's not going to be dragging on the ground. So this, there's two connection points back here. One thing that we might want to do is leave one side off. We'll explain why that's important later. And the whole reason we're using these disposable straps is historically when setting up for an ACDF procedure, it's a combination of a lot of um, makeshift towel bumps, IV bags, and lots of tape. And that's problematic for several reasons. One reason, it's very time consuming and it's hard to make it repeatable. The other uh, aspect is it's not great for patient safety. Um, the tape can be um, abrasive on skin, it can be um, problematic for frail skin, and it's also hard to make it symmetric. So anytime we're, we're pulling traction, which we'll see later in this uh, video, we want to make sure that that's symmetric um, for patient safety. So once we have our single-use components here and the Y-strap attached, um, the next thing that is typically going to happen is they're probably going to cover this with a sheet of some sort. Um, so a standard sheet, and then it's just going to be tucked in along the side. From there, the patient's then ready to be transferred on the piece. All right, now that our positioner's in place and we have our single-use straps connected, we can now bring in our patient. This is Dawson. He's going to help and be our model today. Typically, when the patient is brought in on their bed, they'll be transferred over from this side, which is opposite of where we have our straps connected. When it comes to positioning the patient, we're always going to start from the head down because that's going to determine where um, you know, the, the leg positioner can be positioned. So where we start is we basically want to have the occipital aspect of Dawson's head to be right in the middle of this cutout. It's always good to err a little on the high side um, of this positioner because the relationship between where the straps are anchored and where they go over his shoulders is going to be important. So if the, if, with Dawson in this position, I like where he's at. Again, he's a little on the high side, but that's a good starting position because when this happens, when we bring this over his shoulders, we want this to have a good pull down, which will explain why that's important in just a second. So from here, I really like where Dawson's head is at. 
the, the positioner, this next end positioner is designed to give a little bit of cervical extension of the neck. This really helps optimize the, the surgical site anteriorly. The, w without, if the, if the head is on this piece by itself, this is as much cervical extension as you'll ever need. Oftentimes you'll see surgeons where they want the head to be in a little bit more of a cervical neutral and then just tilt the head back. If that's the case, we do offer a single-use um, head portion that has adjustable uh, heights as well. So for Dawson, we're going to put this in, and he's, uh, he's then at a little bit more of a cervical neutral, and we can just tilt his head back to really get um, the optimized position on the, on the anterior cervical uh, portion of his neck. From here, what we want to do is position his arms. And, and position this leg portion, or the leg piece. So I like where his head's at, hips are in a good spot. The leg piece, we want to basically have the, the top or the apex of this uh, leg portion right behind his knee. So it's a pretty good spot. Um, I like where that's at. So from here, we're going to position the arms. The arms are these uh, straps that ultimately are, um, we basically want it to go right around the elbow. We want to try to make sure that we're not putting any compression on the uh, ulnar aspect of his arm there. Um, so these are going to come right across, and we'll tighten this down. One thing that's going to happen before you do these straps, every facility does a little something different, but ultimately there, there's usually a draw sheet or something where they're going to do a burrito wrap or tuck the arms in. Every hospital staff should do their normal standard procedure when it comes to positioning um, the arms, and then these straps are going to help stabilize them. And these are padded straps. They don't need any other padding around them. The good thing about our, the straps that you see in this demonstration is they, it is, a, it is a, uh, a foam thickness that helps pad as well. So once we're here, I like where his knees are at. His, his head is in a good position. I like the position of his neck. From here, we take our Y strap, and we're going to bring this right over the shoulders. The reason why we use this Y strap and the whole, the, one of the biggest value adds of this is this is typically done with tape. Historically, they would put tape around their shoulders and anchor it to one side of the table, put tape around this shoulder and anchor it to the other side of the table. Why that's important is during ACDF procedures, oftentimes they're going to have to take a, an image of the lateral cervical spine. So if we're working on C6, C7, or the lower aspect of the cervical spine, sometimes the shoulder and uh, just anatomy um, from the lateral side, it, it kind of gives, it's difficult to see the image well. So a lot of times, they'll either use uh, tape or some type of shoulder pad to ultimately depress this shoulder girdle to really make sure we get a good uh, view of, uh, or a good lateral image. So when we position the, these, this Y strap, we want to make sure it's wide enough where we're not encroaching on the surgical site. So typically right over the AC joint is going to be a really good spot for these straps. D Dawson's a little bit wider uh, of a chested guy here, so we have a yoke where we can kind of adjust that to make it fit Dawson just right. Um, <clears throat> and then we'll, we'll pull traction in just a second. One thing when you're bringing this over you'll have to think about is the patient will be intubated this time and they'll have a, a um, ET tube coming out the side. So when we pull this over, you know, you can imagine if there's a tube coming off the side, this is not going to be able to go over the tube. So we can mitigate that in two ways. One is to just not have one of these connected. So this can be disconnected. We bring this strap over like so and then ultimately attach it underneath the tube. The other option is keeping it attached, and um, you know this is something to confirm with the anesthesiologist, but the other option is to just do a, a quick release of the ET tube and right back um, after we have it pulled over. Once I have this over his shoulders, I like where it's at on his AC joints. I like that this uh, yoke strap also, we want that to be low enough, typically right at or below the nipple line is going to be safe as far as that being positioned. Um, once we have this over the shoulders and we like where it's at, <clears throat> we have a traction anchor at the distal aspect of the bed, but ultimately this traction anchor um, allows us to pull traction down on the shoulders, so we like that traction, it gives good uh, depression of the shoulder girdle, and it allows to hold and have static traction throughout the case. Um, the other offering that this Y-strap has, because it has such a long strap, 
um, we actually have the ability to do intermittent traction. So we can let this lay loosely um, over the end of the table, and our yoke is keeping the, uh, the straps in position. Um, and then a surgeon can just request traction on the shoulders and depression of that shoulder girdle just when they want to take a lateral image rather than having it throughout the case. This is beneficial because if this is done with tape, you have no ability to do that. And if a patient is under maybe a, a traction that may, may be asymmetric because they pulled harder on one side than they did the other, the patient is then at risk for a, a brachial plexus uh, type injury. So the Y-strap, um, you know, it, it not only does it do a symmetric uh, depression of the shoulder girdle, but it also gives us the ability to uh, do intermittent traction, but ultimately that's going to be up to the surgeon. So in this, in this setup, we just have it through the traction anchor. We're going to do permanent traction on him. We're going to do a little bit of a pull here, get the shoulders where we want them, and the Y strap will just attach to itself. The last thing I want to mention now that we have him under uh, static traction is I, I want to show the relationship between where his shoulder is and where it's anchored. So we can see that we have this anchored behind his shoulder and it's lower than the top of his shoulder here. That's going to allow the strap to actually pull uh, you know, distal or towards the, the bottom of the table. If we have him positioned too low, so Dawson, I want you to scoot down a little bit for me. If we have him positioned too low, we, you can see that's not really anchored behind his shoulder anymore. And if that's the case, we're not going to get that good kind of symmetric depression. We more so are just going to be tightening his shoulder down to the table, which isn't going to help our lateral image as much. So that is the, the setup for the the next end positioning system, we hope that this is beneficial not only to the patient and surgeon, but also the hospital staff, um, nurses, everybody who's going to help with the positioning process before the procedure.